looking at it. <laughs> yeah. What would you say? Um, why did you not? Why are you not afraid to fail publicly? Because you know what I've learned. Nobody's really watching. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Everybody's so. They forget so, about it the next year or whatever. Well, yeah. no, maybe even in the moment. Because the truth is <laughs> that people, most of all, are thinking about themselves. So just when you think the limelight's on you and everybody's going to say, God, is she stupid? God, why would she say that or do that? The minute they've given you that one moment of attention, they're back on to their own problems, their own selves. So it's like overstatement of your ego to think you're mm. really that important. Right. You know, you could just move right on. We could distract people. You try the next thing, their eyes on that if you're lucky. So no, it doesn't really amount to anything. Mm. It doesn't really amount to anything. Wow. Yeah, it's self ego that is not really true. <laughs> That's interesting because you say that most people are focused on themselves. So when mm -hmm. you mess up publicly or you fail publicly, they'll think about it for a moment, but then they're on to their own thing. If you're lucky and they notice. If you're yeah. lucky and you notice. <laughs> most people won't notice. Yeah. It just feels like everyone notices. Yeah, right? definitely. It's but what about, shame. Right, exactly. Yeah. But what about um, when you want people to have the attention on you for the things you're doing good? Mm. How do you keep uh, the attention on you, the relevancy of yourself as an entrepreneur or an individual when mm -hmm. people are focused on themselves so much? Mm -hmm. How do you keep them thinking about you, your brand, your business, your work, your mm -hmm. mission? You have to think of a way uh, to grandstand. You know? What do you mean by that? Uh, good old fashioned grandstanding. Like I built my Corcoran Group brand on the backs of the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and the New York Post without a doubt. I would think of all kinds of crap to get media attention, hmm. okay, as long as my brand name was in there. Really? The best, single best thing I thought of, uh, which was really just an attempt to get publicity when I couldn't afford advertising because it was a bad market, was my Corcoran report. And all that was is a, was a one-page report giving, giving the average sale price of apartments in Manhattan is how I labeled it. I, didn't, I was too stupid to know that that was a wrong label. It was just my 11 sales but it was on the front page of the real estate section really? and I was quoted on the first line. And boy, that was an eye opener. That's how I learned that publicity can build a brand. Today's version of publicity that I look for in all of the entrepreneurs I invest in is how good are you at social media? I don't care if you're in the sock business, yeah. if you're in hardware, or what, what's going on? How good are you at social media? What's your following? Those are the key questions now. How, how well, how good are you at, at building uh, attention through social media because that's the new free ride not really free but to a large degree free just like the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal were my free ride okay so you have to be creative I think in thinking of how you can grandstand and so what's uh, like I don't know I'm thinking what's a business right today like well I don't want to use cousins we already talked about uh, cousins like um, um, Grace and Lakes, which is a, started out as a baby sock company. Phenomenal entrepreneurs I have. Is this the long, like the long? Lady stocking, yeah, yeah. with the little lace on top. I bought some of those for a girl before, yeah. And they make girls look sexy. They make them look great. And they're well priced and they're beautifully yeah, made. they're nice, they're elegant, yeah. they're sexy. Well, yeah. now it's a full fashion line and it's, uh, I think, $17 million in sales this year. Wow. But what are they particularly good at? There's, there's a husband and a wife team, Melissa, the the, the wife of the team has gorgeous long legs. You may remember her from Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. Her husband's more of a, a nuts and bolts guy, but great at business. What she does is she constantly models and talks directly to the camera. She has so many people that love her. She has limited edition. She sells out constantly, constantly. Wow. She's great at social media. She knows how to primp herself, right. look sexy, talk to the ladies, and get sales. Okay. So she uses her assets, her Asset, skills. Asset, yeah. but she does on social media, and that's built their entire business, social media. Wow. Yeah. And did I answer your question? Because I feel like I somehow got lost in my... How do you stay relevant when things oh. are going good? Mm -hmm. Because when, when your things are going bad, they'll look at you for a moment, maybe, mm -hmm. where it seems like everyone's looking at you, but then they forget. Mm -hmm. How do you stay relevant while you're growing or while things are kind of going the same? I'll give you another example. I have a company I just bought in this past season. I was out of my mind to buy into them. It was two guys with a product called Comfy. It was a sweatshirt blanket. You slip into it, it's like a sweatshirt, but it's actually a blanket blanket. Why I say it was crazy to buy into it, none of the sharks, they were smart enough not to, is because they're two loudmouth guys having a good time, pitching their product, and they had no inventory. They had handmade their own product. Mm -hmm. Two prototypes had no idea what it would cost to make, what they'd sell for, who they'd sell to. They had none of the answers. 
but they're great salesmen. Mm. And I, I said, ah, I'll take 15 or 40% whatever I got of it, boom. Just because they're great salespeople, mm. all right? And what they have done is they've done in their first year $11 million in sales. Wow. They found a way to produce it and sell it. But a couple of weeks ago, it was very quiet. They have had social media coverage to the moon and back, but it was very quiet and they hand delivered, and I wish I could remember the famous actress name, sexy, cool, long-legged actress. I'm so bad with names. Whoever she was, I think she was the same actress who closed the uh, Oscars the other night. I might be telling her. I didn't watch it. Though, ah, yeah. shame on you, the, the my man. Oh my yeah. God. I was on the plane, so. Oh, come on. Yeah. All right, well anyway. I saw your little party, watch party on Instagram. Oh, so lonely, yeah. man. But anyway, <laughs> they sent, hand delivered to her front door, how they found it in Hollywood, the package, mm. and she put on video her jumping on no her way. bed in it. They, quicker than a second, started a social media campaign, people competing with the jumps. They're Johnny on the spot. That's smart business, okay? Mm. They're causing attention. They made it happen, and then they're gonna write it again, and it's gonna be all over social media all over. Yeah. They're annoyed with me that I'm here because I don't have their product because they want me jumping on the beds. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the hood on. I have one girlfriend that has gorgeous long legs. Go. I'm gonna Photoshop my head in to her <laughs> long legs, and I'm gonna win the contest. Perfect, I like that. <laughs> so grandstanding now is like more influencer marketing, if you can find creative yes, ways to that's find that's a fancy way to put it with an audience, maybe it's a micro audience or, or, or a large audience. Or create an audience of yeah. your own one by one, but you really have to be able to grandstand. Yeah. yeah. I know you talk about uh, the keys to entrepreneurial success a lot, but for those who haven't mm -hmm. heard you talk about it, what are what are you think some of the smart ideas in business right now, the smart industries to go into if someone's mm -hmm. maybe talented, maybe they sold a company or they're trying to start as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. what's an industry you really like, a product uh, section you really like, mm. uh, you know, is software, is it coaching, is mm. it consulting, is it an agency, is it physical goods, what, food, what's the type of category you really think You know, really none of the above, mm. okay? It's not my cup of tea to think of an industry that's, that you can, uh, there's certainly leading industries. I don't believe that's where your head should be if mm. you're thinking of going into business. I think your head should be is what do you enjoy? What are you naturally inclined to be good at? What were you always good at? Things, these, these abilities don't change much. Whatever mm. you're, you know, if you're gregarious as a young kid, you generally don't wind up as a bookworm, you know? <laughs> when you get older and get a head on your shoulders, you're still gregarious. So I think what you have to do is think, what would suit me? What could I visualize myself doing where I could picture a happy picture mm. of myself, you know? And I think most people are capable of dreaming that up. I don't think it's an analytical kind of left brain kind of thing where you apply yourself to your best shot, like going and playing back blackjack and putting your chips on the right thing. No, I think you have to figure out you're the table where should you put your chips, what, mm. what's on you, what's true to you, okay? And so for me, it took me 22 jobs to find real estate, but the minute I was out opening keys uh, you know, opening the doors and chatting people up and it didn't feel like work and I was the mm. boss, I knew I was going to be the queen of New York real estate. I knew it as sure as I knew my middle name was Anne. I just could see it in my mind's eye. I never had that vision when I worked my other 22 jobs. And the other thing, it's sort of related to what you ask. I think it's such, a, it's such wrong thinking that you have to choose your spot I think it's like finding out what clothing you look good in. You mm. gotta go try a lot of shit on the rack and see what works with you. And then you kinda, little by little, kinda get your look on what looks well with mm. on your body type, your personality, the colors that are good. I think you find yourself little by little. It's very hard to sharpshoot. It's not that kind of a thing. Yeah. And you know, often the people, I know so many entrepreneurs well beyond or well before Shark Tank, peers of mine in many industries that have succeeded. No one ever went out for that industry. And so that's what I want to do. But you know what made the biggest difference in a myriad of those, if that's a word, a selection of those people, uh, that made the biggest difference was they came along someone they worked for who believed in them. Getting one good boss that gives you an opportunity is worth a million intellectual thoughts and Harvard MBAs grouped up in a pile. Because you kind of can sometimes need somebody else to see that light or you get into something you never thought you'd be interested in and you really love your job. And then that winds up 
being what you do for a lifetime. Yeah. And so I don't believe that you name the big industries. That's more of Mark Cuban stuff. He's mm -hmm. like high level um, investment strategy.